Before we get into our lesson this morning, I'll give you uh, a little funny. Uh, a little girl was uh, talking with her mom and she was wondering how the human came to be creation. So she asked her mother, how did we get here? How did the human come to be? And her mom said, she said, well, there's a God. And she said, and God made Adam and Eve. And from there, we all came to be. So she was sitting with her dad and she asked her dad the same question. How did the human come to be? And the dad said, well, there was monkeys. And from the monkeys, they progressed to become the human. And so she went back to her mom and she said, well, you told me this. And she said, dad said that we came from monkeys. And so the mom said, oh, well, you know, I told you about my side of the family and your dad told you about his. <laughs> In this month of March, we started off this year with I am renewed, refreshing ourselves from 2021. And then last month, I am love. To touch that heart center and to bring up what we were created out of. And now we are studying I am creation. That means we are energy. We're using this stuff, the spiritual substance to mold and to create out of into. And then chapter two, Ernest Holmes, I, I, I feel like chapter two is just absolutely magnificent and breaks it down. Chapter two, mind the greatest discovery. This is our most powerful possession that we have is the ability to think. And we are moving into a brand new moment. We've never experienced this Sunday, this moment ever before. And what are we going to think into it? What are we going to do with this moment of now? George Eliot says, it is never too late to be what we might have been. It's never too late. All regrets and seemingly missed opportunities was then, yesterday. We are in our now and we are creating. Our now is staring us in the face, in consciousness, in this very moment. Creation through consciousness. Our thinking is happening right now always in the now. We are either burning with an idea or a problem. Our passion about it, either one, our belief in it. But what's possible for you right now? The song says, I am. I am here for you. God is here for us. What can we do? Individually created. We have the power of our father, our creator, to create our own narrative. Oh yes, interference comes. But as we listen to this station, Urban League, through Sirius, Joe Madison, he says, but what are you going to do about it? When stuff comes, what are you going to do about it? Are we going to feed it? Or are we going to create with mind, through mind, something new? In our text, chapter two, mind, the greatest discovery. To me, that is the moment we discover and uncover the ammunition we have to overcome to be victorious, to heal, to locate answers, solutions, to be at peace, 
That's the moment we decide to truly live. Ernest Holmes says, if we are endowed with the attributes of self-choice and free will, we must be allowed to make the discovery for ourselves. When we get into a kerfuffle, I like to say, Judge Judy says that, we look for God, our Father, to save us, deliver us. But God infused each of us to deliver and save ourselves through its power, through the power that it created us in image and likeness. Our Father, our God, our Creator is always with us. My Linda Collins and I, we always talk about constant companion, the presence of God, wherever we are, whatever we're moving through, going through, growing through, God is there and equipped us to tap into it. My Shirley sent me something a while ago that said that God was the first cell phone, that we don't even have to do anything. We just have to think into it. We are creation. Paul and I was walking yesterday and we saw these uh, parents with their kids on the bicycle and they had the training wheels on it. And I told Paul, I said, I don't, re I, I can't recall the last time that I saw children riding a bicycle with tricycles, but it made with uh, the, the, um, the training wheels, but it made me think about our life is that we should not be afraid to put the training wheels on. We are in this thing called life. This is the biggest school that we've been in and that we will ever be in. Do not be afraid to put those training wheels on. Learn to maneuver this thing that we call life and not allow the challenges, the things that come that make us uncomfortable, not allow them to have power over us. Every day is new. Let it be new to you. Let God be new to us. For we know with new stuff, whenever we get something new, it could be whatever, a car, jewelry, something. We are giddy. We are excited. We are refreshed until we think it's old. And then we want something else. But I am creation is creating a new thought, a new feeling, a new way of thinking, speaking, and doing in life. We have that opportunity to create newness every single moment. Affirm to yourself, I am creation. We should always be thinking into our nets. God could not make a mechanical being. God created us to be thinking beings, to discover what's possible at any moment. In the days of Moses and John and Jesus, we could go down the list. Everything existed. Nothing new under the sun. God created it all in the beginning. But it is only our uncovering and discovering that brings it forth. Hold on, church family. Recovering our mind. This is the time to recover our peace and serenity. This is the time to recover our inheritance, our friendship and unity, our health. Remember, folks lived to 
in 300 years. It says that Methuselah was lived a thousand years. I don't know, maybe that's an exaggeration, but nonetheless, it was put out there, which means it's possible. When we think about what we think about, we bring about, I am, you are creation. We are creating by way of consciousness through our power, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, lies with everything we think. This is the caveat. What are we putting out? What are we sending out? We think people are in charge of us. This teaching is here to remind us we are in charge of ourselves. We are in this Lenten season. This season began last Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, which comes 46 days before Easter. And today we are in the fifth day of this Lenten season. Yesterday was the I am. Today is the altar, which represents us being anchored, centered in consciousness, that state of consciousness where we truly feel and believe the presence of God. And then we are willing to give up our lower thoughts for the higher state of being, thinking higher. Where we live, let's live from our divinity, not just our human physical beingness. This season is where we worship the power of possibility. No matter the age or the diagnosis or the financial status, the seemingly division in our relationships, this is where we rise up supported by the power and the infinite possibilities of this universal thing we call life. There is a creative power that can always and will turn things around. Maybe not the way that we envision, but in trusting God, we know that things turn out in divine right order. We are to open our consciousness to the mind of God where there's wisdom. Since we are creative, our issues, when not dealt with in a spiritual manner, they take a turn for the worst because we're worried about it, we're fearful about it, we're hurting about it. We're trying to fix it. But there's a power greater than we are that works in, through, as us. And we're supposed to call on our source. We can read and go over Genesis every day because it tells us how things were created and what power we have to use the greatest of God's creation. We could do it every day, but at what point do we actually believe that God is and we are? Being the greatest of God's creation, that, that energy, that vibration, our atmosphere is fueled with this power of possibility, this power of opportunity. What do you need? What will you do to receive what it is you desire? If we're looking beyond appearances, beyond the body changing, because it's going to change anything physical, anything out there is going to change. But the presence and power of God that's within us is the eternal. It never changes. And that's our assignment on this earth, this school of learning spiritual possibility. That's our charge. 
is to every moment of every day incorporate more belief, more trust, and awaken that faith that we trust that something that's greater than anything that we can see with our human eye. Today, church family, this minute, right now, our mind is an outlet to everything we let in. Did you get that? Our mind is an outlet to everything we let in. This intelligent energy serves, it operates as creative power, and it operates through us. We are creating now whatever we're holding. So what are you regretting? What are you thinking about back in the past when you have your now to recreate? Mold and then remold. What are you thinking? What are you putting out there? What are you talking about? This intelligence of life is our intelligence. Ernest Holm tells us it is the presence, inspiration, guidance, direction. It is waiting on our use of it. We are in this wonderful season, moving towards Easter. And this season, Reverend, Reverend Gerald and I talk about it often, is our 12 powers. But Charles Fillmore, call them gates. He said there are 12 gates which open into the Garden of Eden. And when we talk about the Garden of Eden, the beginning where creation started, it's talking about us being in a space and place where we can see the presence, feel the presence of God all around us. And so these gates, are the 12 faculties of mind. And so all through this month, we are to enter into the gate of faith, strength, wisdom, love, power, imagination. Imagination is our superpower because whatever we can imagine and trust and believe in it, we bring it into our experience. We enter the gates in consciousness of understanding, will, order, zeal, renunciation, life. And each of those faculties through the most accelerated mind action that we give it, it lifts us, it lifts the human and doesn't allow these outside things to pressure us, to hinder us, to block us. Let us locate our connection with life, with God, with good, with our Father, with truth. As we learn to see through confusion, we will see peace. We will experience peace. As I'm able to see through dis-ease, I can locate wholeness, perfection. I awaken to wholeness. As I am able to see through poverty, I am able to awaken to success, to wealth, to abundance. Nothing can or will come forth without my permission. We are our own security. We are individualized expressions with the power to call forth. I am creation. So let us believe right now in this moment that the creative soil of our thought, hear that family, the mental space through which law operates, that mechanical operation. Our idea is 
our seed for what's to be. What's to be for you? Our faith is the expectancy of fulfillment. I am believing in this power that is causing me to think rightly. It dissipates wrong thinking. It removes that that does not promote my highest good. Everything we need and desire, hear me, everything we need or desire already exists as possibility. We are required to recognize it, unify with it, realize that the spirit of God is more than willing to give it to us. We just need to call it forth, looking beyond appearances and calling forth out of the invisible that that we want to see manifested. We're talking about creation. Accept your need and your desire is already done. Accept it as though you already have received it. Allow that feeling to take over you. When you know that the check is in the mail, when you know that something is coming, when you know that you're getting ready to go on vacation, there is an energy and a vibration about you that feels inspired and happy and joyful. We are supposed to incorporate that energy and that vibration no matter what, because that is the engine, that is the key that brings it to us. Be a magnet for the good that you seek. Circumstances do not create themselves. They are always molded by someone's thought pattern. And, I, and, and we say, well, why would I call sickness upon myself? Why would I call a uh, financial uh, travesty upon myself? Why would I cause a divorce or a separation? But it's not that we are calling it specifically. It is the things that we've been thinking, things that we've been talking about that collaborates themselves and brings about either a negative or a positive. So we don't have to say it exactly, but whenever we are thinking negatively, whenever we are fearful, whenever we are doubtful, we are building an experience. What are we thinking? Thinking, thinking into this creative soil. Ernest Holmes says, without the thinker, the body could not exist. Listen to your thoughts. They have to come back. They have to mirror. It says it comes back to roost. So listen, no thing unfolds, happens without our permission. Life proceeds because we think into it. There is a storehouse of our beliefs. We are creation. We move according to what we believe and what we feel. Our thoughts are active even right now. We are creating something now. What we think is our investment in. I am creation. What we believe is our continuous building of. I am creation. Our trust, our relying upon, and in this case, we are speaking of spiritual principle. We attend church, we take classes, we tune in to self-help arenas. Why? Because the soul yearns to connect with truth, to connect with our creator. And our creator bestowed upon each of us the opportunity to do and to be. The Lenten season, prayer and fasting 
And most times we think of fasting as reframing from food, but fasting means stopping the things that are not promoting your highest good and whatever those things are. So to pray is to trust and believe in your connection, in your unification with this thing that we call God, this thing that we call life. And when we fast, we refrain from anything other than being that connection. Fasting and praying in this Lenten season. The word Lent is described as meaning springtime, which is derived from a verb meaning to lengthen. Lent comes in the springtime when our days become longer. We will be springing ahead. Don't forget to set your clocks ahead, March 13th this year for daylight saving time, but to spring into a new awareness, a new understanding, a new and higher way of thinking, a new and higher way of being. This is our time to pray, to fast and release. This season is our opportunity to affirm and declare, meditate on the life we want to live, free from experiences that do not promote that image and likeness of our creator. We experience everything that we go through because we believe in it. You wanna change it, change the thinking. Challenges, they will come. Do we feed them, empower them, or do we rebuke them, deny them, not allow them to have power over us? That includes any and every challenge you and I can put on the table. You know, sometimes we compete to match, not even exceed somebody else's challenges. Somebody can tell you about theirs and they wanna beat you, they, they can top yours but let us change our conversation. Let us continue to testify on what God has done in, through, as for us. We have every moment the opportunity to conquer and overcome and give a testimony. We are creation, co-creators with God. Ernest Holmes reminds us, we are chemists in the laboratory of the infinite. What then shall we create? He goes on to tell us that all thought, all thought is creative according to the nature, impulse, emotion, or conviction behind the thought. Our thought creates a mold in the subjective in which the idea is accepted and poured and then sets power in motion in accordance with the thought. Our word does accomplish. So our thought of truth will always neutralize negativity. There is a power that's greater than we are that consciously acts within creative intelligence upon our word. And it doesn't matter if you don't even speak it audibly, just to think it sets the law in motion on our behalf. So family, we need to get our thoughts in order. We need to think higher. And it doesn't matter what comes our way, we have the power to think into it and turn it around. Are we allowing our word to penetrate every thought of doubt, fear, or worry? Are we allowing our word to promote healing? Think it and it will be. It is a mystery. 
but we've proven, we've heard, we've read, we've listened time and time again of testimonies, of people being turned around from the most excruciating things. And it doesn't just happen for some, it can happen for us all. What are you thinking? What are you believing? What are you trusting? We are creation. In our darkest hours, let us turn to our God our father, that great creator, to allow the light of truth to be revealed. Let us awaken to the fact that spiritual substance is our supply. Our thoughts create the experiences, expression, demonstrations that we want to experience and that we do experience. When we live from the idea that spirit sp fills all space and animates itself through all form, when we can truly realize that and live from that idea, then we can truly live. God can only give us what we are willing to take. God's gifts are always being presented but very few of us are expected or accepting of these gifts. Our emotions, beliefs, and our faith need a spiritual accountant so that we don't bankrupt our spiritual account. The things that go on in our world, our relationships, our service, our work can and will take a little piece of who we truly are if we allow it. We must monitor our thoughts. That is the laboratory where everything takes place. So be lifted, be inspired that we are this month reminding you that we are creation. With your faith, be expectant, be confident, be optimistic. Keep your enthusiasm strong. Do not allow yourself to stay in discouragement or be depressed. Charge your mind with interest, enthusiasm, and ambition. Keep your ambition and aspirations high. Cultivate patience and perseverance. Keep your imagination centered in what you want and keep your faith moving toward it. Keep your consciousness expanding, growing, and moving to higher levels. God is new every morning. We wake up to new moments and in those moments, we have the opportunity to dive in and pull out that that we desire, that that we need. So be positive in your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. Accentuate the positive in every situation. Never allow yourself to dwell upon misery, sickness, symptoms, or misfortune. You are creation. I am creation. What do we create? Peace and abundant blessings to all of you. I love you. Thank you.